us off the vinyl by trying to push forward into our territory like that. You see, we don't actually need to pass down 25 more bills onto a point to try to take back just for another two. Hello guys, Mungas here. What's up? Today I wanted to talk about SMR, the best changes that came with the Shattered Warp Gate, some changes that are maybe not as good, some of the in-between, and my feedback on these new bases, why some of them work, why some of them don't, and how they could be improved. Just my humble opinion. First of all, I would like to say that I really didn't like the old SMR, except for vehicle combat. I thought the bases were too isolated, with the huge walls that are not very aesthetic, that used to create big choke points for infantry. Also, this continent was previously very unbalanced. The northern warp gate, just by its positioning, used to be able to conquer more territory than the others. Since the shattered warp gate, this has been fixed, and now the continent is much more balanced. We can see that all the factions, no matter their position, have an equal chance to conquer the continent. And you see battle going all the way up to the warp gates, back and forth, which is a huge plus compared to before. The old Isamir had a lot of bases that were choke points, where just population were sunk over there for hours and hours, like Biolabs, the big towers, like North Point Station, Snowshare Watch Tower, that have been changed. So the old SMR was full of choke points, which I didn't really like. The new SMR has a much more balanced lattice. Some bases have been greatly improved, some bases didn't change. But here I wanted to point out the most interesting changes that came with these new bases. I found a lot of interesting base design concepts that came into Planet Side for the first time with this SMR update. The base that really inspired me to react is this one, the Traverse, that used to be a horrible base before. It was just a bridge over a dried river. Now the bridge has been shattered and it makes for the most interesting base design I've seen in years. The bridge has been broken up into a lot of small pieces. Each one of them is a little bit tilted, so you have to be careful when maneuvering over it. You can just fall to your death. And when you're on the bridges, the tilt makes it so all the firing angles are a little bit different than other bases. You cannot just keep your crosshair at the head level. The head level changes everywhere. And since the bridge have several levels, you can go on the top level as light assault, you can, you can go under. But most of the classes fight on the main level, where the road used to be. And there is a lot of cover from each side, which makes for some extremely fun gameplay something that I never experienced in almost any game. It feels like you're inside a maze, fighting for your life. It's infantry focused, because it's almost impossible for vehicles to maneuver over here, on this broken bridge. You don't get tanks shooting you from the outside, because the bridge is already on the high ground. So for me this base in one of, is one of the greatest examples of SMR's evolution and a great example of Rogue Planet Games doing creative base design. The only thing I regret is that this base doesn't have a lot of fights due to its position. Here I was fighting on it because the continent wasn't fully opened and we only had access to one lane. So yeah, this base has now become one of the most interesting for me in terms of infantry play because of how it changes the rules of FPS's. Next example I wanted to talk about is Jaeger's Fist that used to be a very average base before now it has been a little bit improved. One mechanic I really like is this one-way shield after the spawn that allows you to defend the surroundings. I'm not saying that this base is perfect yet, but it's much be better than before. It has a lot of flanking routes. You can go far right or far left, left or right or directly under the point. Sunders deployed at this base last much longer now because there is a garage. Before the shattered will get, it was a pain in the ass to maintain a sender at this base. So yeah, I really like this one-way shield mechanic. The defenders can shoot and pass through it. The attackers can only see through it, but they cannot shoot and they cannot pass. Again, it's an interesting mechanic because it's unique in all the base designs, in all bases in Planet Side 2. I had some good fights over there, but there was also times where the defenders would get completely spawn camped by the attackers camping top of the stairs. But I really appreciate that this base has more flanking routes than before, better garage, so the fights last for a little longer, that's for sure. Next base I wanted to talk about is Grey Heron Shipping. It used to be a one point base, a little fortress in the snow. Now it has become a three point base with two control points on top level and one control point underground. So I like that the fights in this base are spreading out really good from the top level to the underground. Underground there is like a broken door that forces you to crouch to go through it. If you're a defender and you want to go to C point, you have to go through this door, which creates a lot of choke point. But I really like that they start putting different elements like that. We're one step away from the developers adding doors 
openable windows. This is the kind of signs that tell me that Plantside 2 is going in the right direction. Even though it's not perfect now and this door actually creates a huge choke point where the attackers just camp behind the door and the defenders can hardly pass through this place. Just an interesting base design concept that I, want, that I wanted to point out. Another base that is new on SMR and that is very weird is called Vidar Observation Site and it's just one control point, one vehicle terminal, one antenna in the middle of nowhere and a spawn point on the side of a mountain that can be very easily camped I noticed from above. So I'm not sure what they're trying to do with this base. I think it's supposed to have a lot of construction around. I would say that the design is interesting but still has to be worked on. If this base is supposed to have construction over it, I think there should be more corsium around. For now it's usually a base that is completely stomped by the attackers if they manage to get vehicles here before the defenders. Now we arrive at bases I really like. This is the Envari ruins. This base used to be a biolab, a huge choke point. Now it's completely destroyed with parts of the biolab buried under the ground. There's still the walls around the base but the fact that they are half buried under the snow makes for some very interesting infantry fights. You can stay at the outlines as a light assault or you can go inside the base where there is a lot of cover this huge pylon in the middle and the tree control point are scattered in this big area. I like this base because it makes for some very interesting combined arms moments where you see infantry and vehicles working together and the base is so huge that it makes it very easy for the defenders to hide a sender somewhere in the ruins. This base doesn't have a hard spawn. Both the attackers and the defenders have to bring sunders, beacons, to be able to spawn troops in there. Honestly, I think this is a weak point for the defenders. If you don't have time to prepare, usually you don't have spawns to defend the base. Again, I think this base is supposed to have a lot of construction around, inside or in the periphery, but I don't see much construction here. It's usually the attackers overpropping with vehicles and the defenders doing some guerrilla resistance with thunders hidden in the ruins. Generally, I think it's a much better base than the old Envari Baalab. The destroyed parts of the Baalabs make from some very interesting pieces of cover for infantry fights. A lot of open grounds for vehicles, but also many places for the infantry to hide, for example in the buildings or in the walls around. I really enjoy that we're exploiting all parts of the map when fighting in this base. The periphery, the inside, the walls, all parts of the map are interesting and have fights over it. Before that in Battle Lab, the fights were always at the same corridors. So this is one of the maps that really showcased the combined arms in Planetside 2 and the massive scale. This is why it's one of my favorites. I still think it requires a little bit of tweaking, for example a hard spawn for the defenders or one hackable terminal to be able to spawn vehicles even if you don't have construction items. If construction is supposed to be more integrated in these bases, I think the core shim should be much more abundant before the base, after the base, around the base so the ants can build quickly, prepare the defense and thus make the fight better for everyone. Another thing I really like in this base is that there is a very smooth transition from capping this base to attacking the next base, that is Andvari Barracks. There is a huge playing ground in between the two bases with a lot of cover and it creates some epic battles when people are going out of the ruins to attack the barracks. This is a place where I got some of my best combined arms moments. Even as infantry it's extremely fun because there is a lot of cover and you can see the objective not too far away so it makes you want to push the enemies. Another base that is very similar is Emir Ruins that used to be a biolab also and that became a huge playground. It's very similar to Andvari Ruins, it's just that the debris are a little more scattered around. Again I think it makes for some amazing combined arms fights where the vehicles have a big role but the infantry has a lot of ways to defend itself, hide, take cover. One thing I also like is that the base is literally massive. It's a long walk from one control point to the other, so I use my pocket flash a lot in these bases. And you get fights in very different parts of the terrain each time. I like that these fights in these ruins doesn't end up as big clusterfucks. These fights scale well, even with a lot of population, people are spreading out and it makes from some good flow of the battle. Another base that has some interesting changes is Azatec plant that now has three control points. One on the top level, one in the intermediate level and one at the bottom level. So I really like that it's spreading out to the fights and the battle flows much better I noticed. Before that we often had choke points at the double doors because there was only one control point to get and these double doors was the fastest way from the spawn. Now with several control points they can sneakily go to the bottom level and capture one of the control points 
without being camped by the defenders. Another mechanic that I really liked in the new Azatec plant is this big shield in the middle covering the big gun. This shield is very special, you can go through it, you can see through it, but you cannot shoot through it. So it makes for a very nice place to recover, heal, but you cannot camp the enemies from there because you cannot shoot through the shield. You have to expose yourself to shoot the enemies. Again, a very interesting mechanic that makes for some more varied infantry plays, something I really appreciate. So the next base that I wanted to talk about is one of the best one in my opinion. It's called Excavation GS01E. Again, I like this base because it is huge. It has three control points far away from each other. One spawn room that is very hard to spawn camp because it has a lot of exits and a lot of cover right outside of it. I think this is a base that scales well. It's nice in medium battles, nice in big battles, decent in small battles. It has a lot of thunder deploy locations. You can deploy west, south or east. It's very hard for the attackers to get vehicles inside. You have to hack the terminals and pull them on location. And even if you pull them, it's very hard to maneuver them next to the control points. So I think it makes for some very good combined arms moment. There is a lot of cover from the air, so we don't get ground pounded a lot. The infantry has a lot of flanking routes on the attacking side and the defender side to get to the control points. There are several levels to this base. You can take the high ground as the light assault going on top of the auger. It's a nice mashup between the auger on Amarish and an amp station. It has a little bit of these two bases and it's surrounded by big rock walls that protects the infantry from being farmed from a zerg of vehicles. So this is one of the bases that I'm not getting bored of. Each time I'm getting fights in different parts of the base, next to A point, B point, C point, next to the spawn, next to the vehicle terminal. Flanker classes are extremely fun. You can sneak up as light assault like crazy sneak up as infiltrator like crazy so i really wanted to point out this base for how amazing it is it looks epic plays epic this is in my opinion one of the best bases on planet side 2. it has amazing infantry fights a lot of deployment spawns you're not annoyed by vehicles as infantry it's hard to be completely spawn camped if you're defending and there is a good combination of indoor fighting and outdoor fighting so yeah, awesome base. I like that they used almost all the assets in this base, all types of buildings, all types of cover, and the base has different levels to it. So sometimes on SMR, when the fight gets big enough, it attracts a big storm, a weather anomaly that disturbs vehicles, that disturb your shield. It used to attack people randomly. It was a bit annoying for me, I have to admit. Uh, sometimes I was under popped and the shit and the shit and the storm was hitting me. It felt very infuriating. Now the storm has been tweaked a little bit, it's much less dangerous for infantry. You get attacked much less, and I think they're planning to completely remove oh, it. Fuck. But I still wanted to point out some me. interesting points that this storm has brought. Shit storm. First, the aesthetics. It really looks epic to see it coming, to see it move. It changes the atmosphere of the base. Alright boys, we're gonna start pushing up onto this next base. Let's teach the TR exactly what it means. But like many others, I really don't like that it's randomly attacking infantry. But on the counterpart, I really like that it prevents air vehicles from ground pounding the base. Usually the big fights are those who attract the most ground pounders. But when there is the storm on, you don't get ground pounded. And this is in my opinion one of the positives of the storm. Inside the storm, it's almost impossible for the air vehicles to operate. Which is in my opinion one of the positives as an infantry player. So this is one of the reasons why I like this storm. And I don't think they should remove it. Maybe just remove the fact that it attacks infantry randomly. Remove that it creates weird effect on your crosshair when you go ADS. Remove all the annoying parts of the storm, but keep the aesthetic and keep the fact that uh, it prevents us from being ground pounded. This is my feedback on the storm. So with this revamped SMR, I honestly think that the continent is much better than before than its previous version. The warp kits are more balanced. Some bases are much better than before. The storm has some interesting mechanics, but it can also be annoying sometimes. Some bases didn't change at all, which I found a little weird. For example, Watterson's Redemption, aka the Octagon, that is exactly the same as before. I actually like this base. The only problem that I think it has is that the senders deployed are very vulnerable to vehicles. I think this base should have a garage somewhere to make it harder for the vehicles to just destroy the spawns and kill the fight. Another base that I really like in its updated state is Matterson's Triumph, the base with the two towers. Now, I don't have footage, but the control points have been changed location. 
There is one control point at the bottom level and two control points at the top levels. And the two towers are connected by two big bridges. And I really like that this base has multiple levels, again, bottom, intermediate and top level. It makes for some unique infantry fights and the control points are now exactly in between the two towers which makes it much more balanced for the attackers and defenders. Another base I really like and that has replaced one of the towers is Snowshare Fort before it was called Snowshare Watchtower. That was a huge choke point that required a big overpop to take it. Now the base is much more balanced, you can take it with an even force. I'm really happy that the big towers are gone because it was creating huge choke points and people were stuck there for hours and because of that you wouldn't see the bases close to the warp gate. So bye bye towers, bye bye bio labs. The only thing I miss in the bio labs are the jumpers, these big jumpers that made you fly for hundreds of meters. Some bases in the new SMR are still the same and they are very basic now, for example Rhyme Analytics, Aurora. So there is a big disparity in between some bases. Some bases are huge and awesome. Some bases are very small and very simple and haven't changed much. So I think SMR in its current state is very uneven. Some bases are awesome, some bases are very average. So yeah, updating the old bases that are small and very simple will be better, I think. Some of the bases that don't have a lot of buildings, for example the ruins, I think Corsium should be much more abundant around these bases to make it easier on the base builders. Now that the update is a few months behind us, there is no fights left in the Shattered Warp Gate, which was an amazing part of the terrain. So I really miss fights in these parts. I'll show some gameplay here, and I hope Rogue Planet Games will find a way to bring people back to these places, maybe with the mission system, maybe with the capture flag event from time to time, just to allow us to see this part of the terrain again. And that's it guys. This was my feedback on the new bases on SMR. Let me know what is your favorite base, I would love to know. Thanks RPG for the SMR update. I like this continent much more than before. SMR went from a big clusterfuck choke point continent to having some amazing open field battles thanks to the construction system and thanks to these big open bases like Anvari Ruins and Emir Ruins. So I really like the direction the game is going even though it's, it's very slow and I hope they'll consider this feedback to make the continent even better. So thanks RPG for the updates. Again, please make the construction system more integrated to the maps. I think it will create more variety in the terrain and the fights. That's it guys, have a good day, stay epic, bye bye. No, no, I, I don't think there's any drama. Also, no. everybody in chat, suck my nuts. Um, Hell yeah, get him, bro! Yeah. Like that, no. Like, the game doesn't die, <laughs> like, until I stop working on it. <laughs> like, that's... I will, I will drag this game to glory. Uh, <laughs>